captions or anything like that, just let me know um, uh, and I can turn them on. Sweet. Um, so it's it's probably going to be a small group today because coaches or the problem with coaches uh, didn't seem to get quite the kind of bite that discussing um, where a bus stop is or wh what we call a bus stop seemed to get. And I, which means to me that coaches are a little bit more of a niche area or, or, or a niche concern. So with that in mind, we'll do a full round of intros. Um, then we'll go through just a, we'll cover again just the outcomes from the um, how precisely and accurately we know uh, where a bus stop is and then I want to go through what is a coach because um, I know this sounds like Jay asking one of the first ones that I did of these was what is a bus stop but it's just really getting an understanding of what the difference between a coach and a bus is because they both stop at the same stop sometimes um, they are both big things that you hop on and they have a driver and you sit in a seat so what are the differences and how do we think about them and how do we how do passengers think about them differently um, and then there's a couple of bits of data that I found in the database that I just wanted to find out how people are using because I really can't figure it out. Um, and again, null points for anyone who quotes the schemas at me because um, I've gone through the schemas trying to understand these and I just want to understand from you how you're using them. And also, I want to understand what might be missing. What sort of things they, what sort of workarounds do you have for coaches that we might not know about that you're kind of, oh, I do this to make it a coach stop or my coach stop and I need to do this to kind of represent what's on the street. Um, and then the standard feedback and this should take about two hours or so. Everyone fine? We're all ho hooked in for the ride? Yep. Sweet. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go through this alphabetically because there's only 10 of us. We're just going to do name. We're going to do pronoun, um, where we're from, and uh, coaches are. So what are coaches to you? So my name is Dr. J. I use they as a pronoun. Uh, I'm from ThoughtWorks and I'm working for DFT as a consultant. Um, and I've been running these meetings for a while. Um, Coaches are the places where I get incredibly car sick and have had very embarrassing moments on all the coaches that I can recall taking. Um, most of them are in Sweden between uh, an airport and and, and Stockholm. Um, I think it's called Vasteras Airport. That trip is just uh, not a pleasant one if you happen to be sitting near me. Um, so who would like to go next? I'm going to go to Adrian next because I'm just going to go down the list alphabetically if you've finished eating, Adrian. Maybe, get in there. Uh, hi, I'm Adrian. I'm the product owner for the redevelopment of Naptan. Uh, he, him, that's my pronouns. And I do you know what? I use a lot of public transport. I never use coaches, so they are nothing to me, I'm afraid. <laughs> it was either megabus or train. I don't know why I missed the coach thing. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Isn't a megabus? Megabus is a, mega is a bus coach. A coach? Well, is a coach. and this Not, is and this is part bus. of my question. This is this is exactly part of my question. Even the name is confusing. Um, Andy, it, I'm going to send you up next. It didn't feel it didn't feel like a coach when I was doing London to Wakefield. I can assure you, it felt like a bus. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Andy Hole. Um, I am a he or a him. Uh, I'm from National Public Transport Information, and a coach is a long distance bus quite often with a toilet on. I suppose that's, that's about it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really good. Thank you very much. Uh, Dan. Yes, I'm Dan Saunders. Uh, I'm from Basemap. I'm a he, him, and coaches are to me the bane of my life because every Friday we publish the NCST, which is National Coach Services Database, which is the open data of all the coach information, so all the mega buses, all the National Express. And generally, every Friday, we're running around trying to work out why a certain coach is not appearing in the data or something like that. Um, so, yeah, uh, love them and hate them at the same time. So, Dan, I think you are the person who's going to be giving me lots of information today. Um, Di, you're up next. Hello, I'm Di Wright from Connectees Valley. I'm a she, her. Um, coaches are something I used to use to travel back from university for the weekend. Many, many, many decades ago. 
<laughs> not that long ago, Di, surely not. Uh, Josh, <laughs> you're the next 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you're the next one up. Hi, uh, Josh Goodwin, he, him, from BrustTimes.org. Um, I was going to say a coach is anything with a external luggage compartment, but I, I guess a car or a van is one of those two, so I don't know. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, Paul Baker, you're, you're the next Paul one. Baker from, Paul Baker from Train Taxi Limited. He, him, or being facetious, I could say your excellency or your grace or something <laughs> like that. Um, our interest really is in mapping our data to stops, coach stops, bus stops and other nodes in that. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Sarah, you're the next one up. Can I just check that you can hear me on this mic? All good. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Sarah Al Adley and I work at the Department for Transport. I work in the Developing Data Unit as the Head of Data Management there. And um, later on this year, I'll be taking over a little bit um, in terms of product for Naptal and sort of looking at data quality issues as well. Um, so, yeah, this is my first public meeting in attendance and I look forward to it. Um, pronouns are um, she, her, and what a coach is to me is um, a public transport means by road um, with allocated stops and, yes, toilets and luggage facilities. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for that. Sindhu, you're the next one up. Oh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sindhu and uh, the pronoun would be she, her. Uh, I'm from County Durham and I think coaches, they, they mainly for long distance travel and they link big cities or big towns. Cool. That's really good to know. And Tricia, you're the last person on, on, on my list today. I'm Tricia Wright from Nottinghamshire County Council, she, her. Um, and a coach to me is um, a long distance service that has a limited range of stops, won't stop at everything. Although, you know, th there are some that, you know, are usually defined as taking old people to the seaside. <laughs> <laughs> it's what kind of happens in Nottinghamshire. Um, yeah, but um, just with, that, with me being the last one, a funny story about coach stops and Naptan. Um, we have two what they are defined at, they were, were originally defined as bus stops in trial services, northbound and southbound. I was like, no bus services use those. So I deleted them or made them inactive in Naptan. And then all of a sudden it messed <laughs> with the coach data. I was like, oh, somebody, when the database was originally created, didn't define these stops to say that they were coaches. So yeah, I, um, I did make a bit of a boo-boo removing some stops that were served by coaches because they were only served by coaches. And they're the only ones in Nottinghamshire that I know of, actually. So, <laughs> oh, that's that's good to know. And in fact, that that is that is the sort of story that we <laughs> need to be aware of when we're going through this. So I was just um, faffing about, and I can't do it because I'm having a moment. Um, let me just that should have turned into a link. Uh, let me just unlock it. And then we can just grab the link. I'm just going to make sure that everyone on this meeting is able to see the mural. Are you all able to view the mural off on uh, off on a separate screen or as part of the screen, or would you like me to share it? I can see it fine. I can cool. see it, see it. <coughs> separately. Excellent. Cool. Just just wanted to double check because it makes my life easier if I don't have to share my screen because then I can see you all and I can see interactions. Um, so very, very quickly. Oop. Sorry, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure I have the link. Um, is there anyone else? I've just put it into the chat. Thank you. And it show it and it's showing uh, uh, the link to the mural is showing on the mural because, you know, um, uh, but it's uh, usually when I share my screen, people can see the link. Um, so as we've on the agenda, we've just done the intros and welcome. Um, we're going to do just quickly touch on the precisely and accurately how we know where a bus stop is outcomes. Um, we're doing this just to because there was quite a big decision made and we just wanted to make sure that everyone saw this and heard this and was aware of this. Um, and then we're going to go through what is a coach. And I know we've covered some of that, but I really need to understand what the difference between a coach and a bus is. Um, then there's a couple of bits of data. There's a national coach code and the 900 coach stop areas. I just want to understand how you're using them and what you're using them for. And then I also want to look at what's missing, what in the current 
schemas and that you're working around and how you're working around it. For example, with Trisha's story, how you know that something is a coach stop um, and not just a bus and coach stop because they're, you can have both in the same place and things like that, and then just get some feedback. So quick outcomes from precisely and accurately, how do we know where a bus stop is? Um, we confirmed that everyone is using Eastings and Northings, and I've just been through and double checked in the, um, national CSV and everyone is in fact using Eastings and Northings to the correct precision which is a meter by a meter. Um, we also and this was the big thing we concluded that the best point to measure a bus stop from is the place where somebody needs to stand to catch a bus. So the focus is on that passenger experience so where I need to stand to catch the bus that 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 kind of meter square spot, that's the spot where we do our measurements from. Um, and hopefully that will help a lot of the mapping services understand how they attach that to roads and to road centers and things like that, because we are mapping exactly where you stand. Um, we are still taking the question about centrally con performing an Eastings, Northings to lat long conversion. Um, there's about a third of the data doesn't have latitude, longitude. Um, so we have taken this to the SRO. We should have a response shortly. Adrian, I'm, not I'm gonna put you on the spot because you popped on camera. So I thought, oh, Adrian might have an update rather than just shortly from Jay. Oh man, that's bad timing. I just popped my camera on because I finished eating um, and moved rooms. Um, I think we're just doing some work to have a look at what the impact would be and how it might affect people if we were to have to overwrite data that is supplied to us. So that's just one question that we're finishing up. So I don't know when exactly we'll have the response on that. Uh, hopefully as soon as possible. Fantastic. Um, and Ordnance Survey have a page of how to do the calculations between the two different standards. They've got an Excel spreadsheet that allows you to easily, well, easily, because it's an Excel spreadsheet, easily perform that calculation of taking your Eastings, Northings and using their conversion, which is we've agreed is the conversion method to go and get the, um, the latitude, longitude from that. Um, and there's a link down there after that. Quick breath in, take a second. Any questions on that? D does anyone have any concerns or any worries other than um, there is still some missing and we understand this and um, we're trying to mitigate the impact as much as we can. Fantastic. So I want to give you, given what we said at the start, I want to give you a mm, couple of minutes to put on the mural, st sticking stickies on, typing typing them in. What is a coach? What is it? If I'm looking at something, how do I know it's a coach? Because some of them are called megabus, some of them are double deckers, some of them um, some of them stop at the same stops. How some of them are run by the same companies. So there are some state. I think stagecoach runs buses as well as coaches, and megabus only runs coaches but not buses. Just how as a passenger, do I tell what is a coach and what is a bus when I'm waiting at my stop? How do I understand the difference? How would I see the difference? How do I, what are the conceptual differences between the two things? So I'm going to put a timer on for, uh, I'm going to give you three minutes because I think we're all pretty good on this. Um, and any of these, I might also challenge some of the exceptions because I know that there are some buses that go between two cities. Um, and so saying a coach is something that goes between two cities, how do I tell the difference between that coach and a bus that does the same? So these are odd little questions I'm going to ask because I want a, as unambiguous as possible definition of what a coach is. Um, because it's a tricky thing to describe. I'm out of interest, Jay. Are you interested in my thoughts or, or should I keep them to myself? You can put them on the board just like everyone else, Adrian. Okay. You are part of this meeting uh, yes. because it's about getting everyone's thoughts and ideas out of your head and visible to everybody. So uh, I want to challenge all of those assumptions and ask all the... Um, we went through this with what is a bus stop and I will you caveat all kind my... of looked at me. 
looked at me like I was mad asking what is a bus stop and then we got into a really deep discussion about what a bus stop actually is and I think we came up with a bus stop is where the bus stops um, as the best definition of a bus stop but I need to understand what is a coach and how do I tell the difference between a bus and a coach when I'm standing at a stop just not easy I'll caveat any of my comments with I am not a public transport expert. Um, these are comments from a user of public transport as opposed to um, somebody with industry experience. And that's also one of the things because Adrian is possibly more like our passengers and more like the people using the system. So how do we describe a coach to somebody who's trying to catch, keeping that focus on that passenger experience as well? Five minutes later. We've got about four minutes left, but I'm also loving that some of these are, they're not contradictory, but it's not, it's there's still ambiguity as to what a coach is and what a bus is. I can see from some of these. Um, so let me just run through. Uh, feel free to, 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 to finish writing or move things around. Coaches generally use us at higher and have more facilities, toilet screens, etc. Um, so there are some. So when you say higher, are you meaning the single deck, but the but the passengers are higher up rather than like on a double deck, like in London yeah, exactly. we've got the. Exactly. So, okay. enough so it's just, uh, they sit above the luggage compartment. There's a big luggage hole underneath, and so they sit generally yep. higher up in in, in the vehicle. Um, coaches are not regulated in the same way buses are. Yep, so you, so, don't, need to, you don't need to pre-register coach services in the same way you need to do a, a bus registration. Um, and so there's, there's not the same sort of uh, requirements for that. Uh, and they're not, uh, you know, they're not covered by BODs, for example. So the operators don't have a, the same duty to have to publish data sets and things like that. Tricia. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to add to that. One of the differences between coaches and buses is that they can actually um, travel a longer distance. There is a certain mileage limit set for local bus. So we have um, a service called the Shield Arrow that is actually across three registrations, um, even though it's the same bus and it doesn't change anything. Um, they can't register the whole length of the route, whereas coaches, you can register longer distances. So there's a limitation on buses, on bus mileage? Yeah. Well, um, what is that limitation? Do you know off the top of your head or if you, I can't, if I you can't, don't? I can't remember what it is, but um, I could see if I could find out for you and yeah. drop an email. Yeah. So And you've got one bus that does three registrations to beat yeah. this. Yeah. So we've got a, a bus that runs from Nottingham to a village called Ollerton. Um, and then um, it either goes on one hour on, on one hour it goes to works up on the other hour it goes to Retford but they have to register it as Nottingham to Ollerton as hourly and then Ollerton to works up as two hourly and Ollerton to Retford as two hourly and three registrations because it goes over the driver mileage that's allowed for that route I'm not sure if anybody else on this call has the same situation and can maybe answer what the distance is for local bus Isn't it 50 kilometres? Isn't it the year? It's the European rules, I believe. It's the European um, it? okay. fibre limited rule. So it's 50 kilometres. We've got loads of them. Stagecoach have a lot of um, split registration services, which are a pain, I've got to say. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I only, well, I have one stagecoach one and I manage data for North East Lincolnshire and they have two of them. And they're, they're again, stagecoach. So it seems a familiar pattern with stagecoach, doesn't it? Is it? So um, so that's good. Uh, Stagecoach services. I'm just making myself a note to chase you both up. Andy and Trish, Trisha, I-C-I-A. <clears throat> right. In, uh, interestingly, uh, Megabus is also Stagecoach. Just throwing it out there. Oh, OK. So, so <laughs> oh, just to make my life so much more difficult in trying to understand. I have trouble enough re remembering um, the names of places 
and that County Durham is not an island. Um, so <laughs> it's part of stagecoach. <laughs> yeah, I still remember. <laughs> so megabuts. So so, uh, but megabuses. Megabuses are coaches. Megabuses are coaches. Yes. But stagecoach. This is so. I have to say, I'm just noting this down. Megabus is coaches, but stagecoach can be buses. Yeah, and trains. I think. I think stagecoach runs some trains as well, just to add. Uh, and then you've got Flixbus as well. That are also coaches. Just to throw that Flix out there. Flixbus. Yeah. Is that F L I X or F L E X? F L I X. Flixbus, also a coach. Oh, and Easy Bus is also a coach. Yeah. There's, there's not freaking bus in their name. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to clarify. So, um, is Megabus a, a certain brand under the Stagecoach? I mean, it belongs to Stagecoach, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, great. And Stagecoach has similar brands. One is Megabus and there were several others. Yeah? Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks for that. I've always been wondering. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I I almost need to put together a crib sheet for this. Um, so let, let me go back. Uh, coaches generally enter urban centre to urban centre or airport, though there are event services that are specific for an event. So there's also the coach. So I just to be clear, I'm talking the coach services that I can catch from a coach stop not privately booked coach services. So the coach services to take my community centre to the seaside for the day and back again is not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about public coach services that I could so, wave and have the coach stop, which is slightly different to those private booked coach services, just to be, again, slightly more clearer. I would argue against that slightly. So uh, you can turn up and get a coach to Wembley um, on the day, which is run by National Express. But it runs uh, it's service it, it doesn't run as regularly um so but to dominate you to pre-book but you can turn up at the stop and if there's space on the coach they'll let you on um so yeah and airports as well is the same so national express then also do the other events for glastonbury and other kind of large kind of music festivals and they are coaches that can be pre-booked and they run specifically from different locations um to yeah to specific large events trying to and uh, we've seen much more of that as many events are trying to become more green and so coach travel is seen as a big part of of producing uh foot traffic to events and car traffic uh, and things like that so sometimes they'll offer a discounted coach ticket as part of uh as part of when you purchase a normal ticket so i have a quick i have a quick question then do mm -hmm. do other people have coaches in their area where as you say you can just flag it down you don't have to book it, book your seat in advance because i just my assumption was coaches you you had to pre-book your seat because there wasn't a guarantee you could get on it we do, do in you? our okay. in the southwest we have um several coaches that are registered in small parts as local bus service so okay. the taunton to taunton to london victoria has sections in or it certainly used to i don't know if it still does it has sections in taunton that you could f flag and hop on hop off same as a bus and okay. they were registered for as a local bus so they could get the vsog oh okay yeah makes sense what's what was the BSOG? Just sorry, I'm just catching up. So start talking about BSOG and I'll finish writing. Bus Services um, Operator Grant is BSOG. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, fuel mileage. I should, I should remember right. that. BSOG. So, so, so on that, I, when, when, I, when I, we also process the TNDS, and the TNDS we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, uh, that's a lot. Probably about you thirty. You to some. <laughs> we've got thirty. <laughs> some about, will 30, count. about thirty-five uh, services um, that are registered as coaches that come out in the TNDS, and they're based in the southwest, the southeast, and Scotland regions. So we've got yeah. So they're they're the ones that where they created the trans exchange files. They specified the transport mode um, as coach. As about yeah, and I've got the service numbers. Actually, someone from the TFT asked me for this list earlier in the week. Um, Rajesh Mystery, if that brings a bell to anyone. Um, so I forward this list on to him. 
could only you, last week. Could, could you pass that on to us, uh, to me and Adrian and Sarah as well? Yeah, sure, no problem. That, that would be fab. So TNDS has 30-something coaches that are local services. So this is making it even harder to define the difference between a bus and a coach, but this is good. Um, so where are we at? Where are we at? Um, in Scotland and south of England, some local services are classified as coaches. No idea. No idea why. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's Do you think it's... that's OK, cool. Do you think that's also about the mileage limit and getting around that or is it around publishing and bods? I think it's probably the they've been there for a long time. So I'm guessing is there is some sort of yeah 50 limit or something on there, as Andy said. Right. Post duty mileage. Cool. Mileage. Okay. Limit. Um, is there really a difference? As we have many coaches that are registered as local bus services and. This is kind of one of those ones of some, I love the fact that some local bus services are coaches and some coaches are local bus services. So making sense of this is not a simple, this is a coach, this is a bus. There's things in the middle. Right, having a look again. Coaches usually have large luggage storage areas, only pre-bookable in advance, limited stop, usually due to traveling long distances. Usually tell the difference, they are normally stepped access and have a lift for anyone requiring wheelchair access, etc. Does that start to describe a coach? I say it describes a national coach, but maybe not a local coach service. Okay. So there's some lo so there's some local coach services. Coach services. Yes. Yeah. How would they my, differ? That was, that was my description. So that is a description of a national coach service. So I don't so, know. So, I don't. I don't have any local coach services, so couldn't explain that. So. Um, so anyone who's got a local coach service, what parts of of dies? That was Di, wasn't it? Sorry, I didn't see who was talking, and I'm quite bad on recognising voices. No, it was Trisha, sorry. sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry, no, no, no. It's I'm tone deaf, so I really, ha I really struggle to tell voices apart. Um, can you, exp can anyone who's got a local coach service tell me what is in Trisha's list that isn't on a local coach service? So we've got large luggage storage area, only pre-bookable and limited stops. And uh, I'm going to put unique accessibility or, or different accessibility. So which of those would be on a national, wouldn't be on a local service? Is there any of those? And I'm throwing you all the spotlight on you all here. Um, so coaches, this is allowing us to define a little bit more of what a coach is. So a coach has always has a large luggage storage area. Is that true of every single coach that we can think of? I can't see you nod, by the way. I, I, you, you've got to vocalise your nodding. <laughs> yes, I think so. From, from the data that I see, Predominantly uh, on the national coach services, it's all about intercity, people going on holiday and things like that. So you've always got, yeah, large storage compartments that are built in as part of it. Okay, so they always have luggage storage. Um, are they only pre-bookable in advance or could you just turn up and catch one? Uh, so it depends where. So some some places have hubs where you can book a ticket. So if you think Victoria, you can go to Victoria mm -hmm. Coach Station and book turn up and book a ticket there. But if you're on a stop that it, it stops in Guildford, for example, it's our local stop, I don't believe if National Express you can turn up and book a ticket there. It needs to be pre-booked. So I think it depends on the stop. And is it a stop that gives you it's got ticketing purchase facilities? Okay. Is there uh, anyone there is, there is oh, sorry, Andy. 
sorry, Dr. J, there is a question of what are we talking about with a national coach? Are we talking about a vehicle that is a coach? Because we got several coaches that do the school run, but that's a bus. But the vehicle is a coach. But you don't have to. It's pre-booked, I suppose, because it's done by the school. So, you know, it's and that's a school bus. Now, a school bus uses a coach's coach as a vehicle. But I'm even confusing myself now and not sure where I'm going. <laughs> well, school contracts often oh. say they've got to have seat belts, and you don't have yeah. seat belts on a bus. You get seat belts on a coach. Ah, yeah. that's a good one. Have seat belts. Um, yes, my understanding leave... is that over 50 kilometres, a service that drives over 50 kilometres has to have seat belts. And I assume they have to be used. Hmm. Okay. But is that so, is, yeah, so... our stage? Well, where we said about stagecoach earlier, for example, we, um, we've got a service that goes from uh, Exeter to Holsworthy, Holsworthy somewhere else, and somewhere else to Bude. So it's it's a fairly long service, but that's and it's all the same bus. It has four different drivers. Now that, as far as I'm aware, does not have seat belts. It might do, but as far as I'm aware, it doesn't. And it, they change the driver, not the vehicle, so the tra the passengers can stay on. But it's just the, the European regulations. Okay, I think I every say, I bet that coach I've I bet, been on it. Sorry. I was, every, I was just going to say, oh, sorry, Paul, you go. Every National Express coach I've been on in recent years has had seat belts, and you have been told to put them on. Uh, these, uh, these, yeah, I'm not talking about National Express. This was stagecoach. These are a stagecoach bus. Okay. Yeah. Registered as a local bus, but does 100 odd miles in the in the journey, and broken uh, down into four sections. I would take a bet that they've done them as for different registrations oh. oh yeah they are yeah yeah and that's so so this becomes uh an an interesting so i think the seat belts sounds like one there so luggage storage seat belts and generally pre-booked is there anything else that that defines a coach is different from a bus because the distance um, for a passenger, they wouldn't care that it's split into four parts. They would just know that they sit on the same bus and the drivers swap and, you know, drivers swap, um, drivers swap in London. So drivers swap, swapping drivers is not a big deal. But they're just, to them, they're just doing a journey. So it's the luggage storage. It's the generally having to pre-book. It's the having seat belts. Is there anything else that defines a coach? One thing that we have in that the reason that a coach stop, bus, a coach bus stop is different from a bus bus stop is that the coaches are certainly in the case of our bus station allowed to be on the stand longer. So they have a extended pickup slot. Which is why, certainly in our area, we don't have coaches on street picking up at the same stops as bus stops because they're there longer. And obviously you've got people with suitcases and things to mix with people that are just what, 37 down to the town. Yeah, you have to change if you've got your bus stop clearway markings. If it says no stopping except buses, that's a two minute quick pick up drop off. So if you have longer than your two minutes, you then suddenly have to call it a, a bus stand, which then right. extends the period of how long something can wait at the stop. I start. Just let me undo that. So a bus stand. Yes. Yeah. Stand or a bay at a bus station. Is also. Uh, but the, what's going the on? The actual data in Naptan mm -hmm. is that is is there any difference in the actual data in Naptan? It's yeah. still a BCT. Yeah, there's there's no stop, isn't it? there's no difference in Naptan. It's just the way the the markings and what they're called on the you know the yellow box on the road, whether it's a bus stop or a bus yeah. stand. Uh, so okay, so so bus stand is um, also for coaches. And there's no difference in Naptan. Should there be a difference in Naptan? 
This well, is going to be one of my next questions. See that that's again the thing with with bus stops. All bus stops are BCT or BCS. The B is bus. The C is coach. Mm -hmm. BCT is bus the coach. Is, on, bus coach is, taxi on street. Yeah. No, it's not taxi. It's tram. It's tram. So I'm referring BCT to the uh, schema, is, Dr. J. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. Null points. <laughs> bus coach. Bus coach. I've said. So it's bus coach, and it's either uh, taxi or tram. It's not taxi. When it's tram. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's not taxi. Well, it's not taxis have their own acronym. Uh, um, and, and a BCS is a bus coach stop. Is that right? Station. 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 BCS, yeah. Okay, so the thing that I've got at the end of my street, without me going to look at the schema, uh, where, um, believe it or not, there's some coaches that can stop at the end of my street. Um, is that a BCT or a BCS? It's an on street, but a coach can stop at it. BCT. A BCT. A BCT. Yeah. BCT. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. I do Good stand tonight. corrected. It is. In the schema, it is bus, coach, tram, stop on street, BCT. All these years, I've been getting it wrong. <laughs> yeah. I, Andy, I don't think anyone's going to hold it against you, don't worry. There's quite a lot in that schema. <laughs> remember, it all would be amazing. <laughs> cool. Right. Taking a breath, we're just going to quickly go through these last couple to make sure everything we've covered everything. Um, MB, there are also holiday coaches, which are, are different to long different coaches, though they can do and pick up and drop off at, at widespread locations. But m some of those coaches are when you're talking holiday coaches, are you talking about ones that I would pre book to take my group of people on a holiday? No, one that you take your family on a holiday and then at the next town over it'll pick up two more families and then the you know 30 mile down the road it'll pick up another family right and it takes us all to the butlands or something like yes. that yeah or to the right i've got you whatever. yeah 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 <laughs> i love the way that i defaulted to butlands and you defaulted to airport <laughs> i've not been abroad for years <laughs> i'm about to go abroad i'm about to cross the channel for the first time in two and a bit years i used to do it every week um it's kind of insane right coaches are only pre-bookable you cannot i think just turn up and ride there's a question around that and i will do some we will do some research nope. coaches are long distance with interchanges at major points coaches are not as accessible as a bus uh i as a stick user i would say i i have lots of fun fun on buses uh we have some coaches that have segments that are registered as local bus so offer hop on hop off tickets they have seat belts a bus will stop frequently on request coaches will have fewer stops between destinations so can you stop a coach on request or do you just do you buy a ticket from stop a to stop b so if i'm buying it from please place A to place B because I'm not going to attend names and I decide to hop off in the middle. Can I hop off in the middle or or do I have to go all the way to, from place A to place B? All the way from place A to place B. You might be able to get off in the middle providing that is a Registered. stop on that route that the coach right. would stop at normally and you're just getting off. You, right. The driver wouldn't be pleased because he's put your case somewhere different on the bus for the people that are going to place B. But yeah, in theory... Yeah. In theory, so 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 the bus driver secures, puts all the luggage on, on so that it's easy for when people get to place B, they can all take their luggage off, and it's easy to find. He's not having to hunt through there, not yeah. having to hunt through all of the right. Gotcha. Ha! Huh. Do we have that, that with all of this discussion? Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> sorry, I was going to say that sounds reasonable. When I was in Barcelona, I tried to get off early on my stop. And the bus driver was shouting at me like a child, so I slipped back down. <laughs> now we understand why bus driver was was not uh, well pleased. Um, yes. <laughs> so, do we now have a, at least some vague notion of what a coach is? 
So it's got seat belts, it's got luggage storage, it's allowed to be on stand longer, and it's generally pre-booked. And I'm saying generally pre-booked. Is there anything else that defines a coach over a, over a bus, or is that we're kind of there? I did wonder just on that point about um, the luggage and getting off early. Do you think there's any um, legal requirements maybe as to why you can't get off early sometimes? Like you're kind of insured, you know, the bus driver's insured to drop you off at a certain place for safety? I don't know. I'm, kind, I'm actually wishing our lovely stagecoach person was here today because our lovely state, although I think he works on the buses, um, because our lovely stagecoach person would at least know who to ask. I think that's well worth going to chase down and check up. Yeah, I was going to say the thing about usually on stand longer, that if you are going into an actual bus station, um, some buses are allowed to stay on stand longer. Um, yeah, some so, buses stop others lay for mid route for 10 minutes outside a specific location as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the on stand longer is not that much of a differentiator, but the seat belts sound like the one and only seat belts and luggage space sound like the differentiators because um here here's what I think the difference is. When I hop on a bus with my luggage, it's my responsibility to mind the luggage and look after it. When I hop on a coach with my luggage, the lovely person who's driving the bus takes my bag and tells me where to put it in the thing, and then I hop on the bus. So I'm not sitting holding my luggage. That, to me, is the difference with a seatbelt. Does that make sense, or is that too precise? I think that's part of it. And I also think about the seatbelts. Maybe is the seatbelts introduced due to different speeds of the coach compared to a bus? Yeah, quite often coaches have got motorways. Yeah, they do go on motorways, that's correct, isn't it? And buses tend not to. Mm. Are there buses that go on motorways or places over 50 miles an hour? Yes. My yes. bus goes yes. on the A3, which is 70 mile hour road. Which is really scary for the joints. A lot more, I'm a lot more chance that coach would do, I think. Ah, uh, but but what we're trying to find is not not oh, ambiguous differentiators, yeah. but real hardcore differentiators, so that we know unambiguously that this is a coach. So if it's got seat belts, it's a coach. If your luggage is stored separately, it's a coach. I would say another difference is generally a coach route is over 50 kilometres. If I'm looking at the uh, National Express data and Megabus data, they you know, they're, they're, they don't operate small distances whatsoever. So if you're saying mm -hmm. if a bus route is less than 50 kilometres, the coach has is generally over 50 kilometres. I don't think it's any coach uh, data that I've seen is less than I that. Think I think we're saying coaches have to be over 50 kilometres, but buses might be as well. Yeah, that. and it's... Yeah, it's that might be that it's that might be on the route that that I'm trying to shy away from. I want hardcore, definitive, black and white but, rules. So half of that is the coaches won't be less than fifty kilometres. I mean, that's something that we can yes. check. But the, yeah. so half of it's correct. It's just not correct the other way around necessarily because of the multiple registration thing. Yep. Di, you were coming in. Also. Oh, you came off mute, so I was like, oh, Di's got something. Okay, cool. Um, let's move on. So there's this lovely um, lovely thing in a CSV file that, as far as I can tell, has, um, and just bear with me, I'm having, because I'm sharing, because I'm doing a call and using my second screen, it's playing up slightly at times. It keeps on flaking out of me. So um, there, in the CSV file called uh, Coach References CSV, there is a national coach code. I cannot find any reference to the national coach code anywhere inside the XML file. So, and second bonus point, the national coach code and the data therein 
doesn't contain all coach stops, contains only 1,300 stops, which is not the right variation of any other matches that I can find within the system. Um, but also, it hasn't been updated since 2014 that I can tell. So, asking people the question, what is this? What am I looking at? Where should I be looking? What have I missed? Because I have spent a little bit of time trying to unfigure out what this is about. Does anybody know? And please don't put me to this. Please don't quote me to look at the schema because I have and I've read it backwards and forwards. And the only place that it mentions coach national coach code is in this file. It's not mentioned anywhere else in the schema. Over to you all. Please just help me understand this. Yeah, I, think I was under the impression that. Josh, go on. You go. Are they used internally by National Express coaches like on their coach tracker and booking system and stuff like that? That is 100% right. Yeah. So when we get the National Express raw data, it comes to us um, and there's, there you have a ZPN record that is a their 9000 code to a NAPSAN lookup. Um, and so when we process their data, we effectively convert all the national coach codes into NAPTAN stop codes. But they are the only ones that utilize uh, that data so it's from their own internal systems. Uh, people like Megabus and Flixbus use the NAPTAN as their source data. So it's only National Express. Is that correct, Dan? Yeah. Cool. Um, I've just got to ask, have they never changed a stop since 2014? So uh, they are using a legacy system um, that is still only exports as an ACO SIF file um, and does it badly. <laughs> um, and so effectively, that's how we get the data. And then we've got a, a lookup that uh, actually they provide a lookup to what the what the what the NAP uh, reference code is. So so this file. You're not using this file to look up the ECTO code. You're using your own reference system to look it up. Or are you using this file to look we, it up? Because I'm not sure I would trust it. So we, we produce um, every week when we do the NCSD, we provide a file called coachreferences.csv. Um, and that coach references CSV is a lookup between the ACCO code and the national coach code. Uh, so we do utilize that as a source data, um, but we also override the data because I don't believe the coach references CSV gets updated at all, really. But the National Express one gets updated in their own internal system every week uh, when we get the data on a Thursday. Um, so, yeah, there you go. So, so, so what I'm what I'm just trying to understand and I'm just making doubly sure there was a file that was created sometime that has not been updated since 2014 yes. that you're using but not to look up ACTO codes for the national coach codes for National Express. Yes, we use it. Uh, we load it um, as part of our process, but we overwrite it with the National Express. Data, so we, we don't need that. If we put a blank file, it would make no difference to us. So that we could not just just not produce it wouldn't hurt you in any way or shape or form. It probably would because we are looking for a file, but if we, we don't really care on the contents because it's all provided in the National Express data. And so one of the things that happens is if we then see that someone's deleted a NAPTAN stop um, or uh, but it's deleted when we do the National Express data, we'll see it comes across as deleted and then we'll get National Express to update their ZPN record to us with an updated NAPTAN or go back to whoever the region is and say, why has this not been deleted? It shouldn't have been deleted. We're still calling it it. Is that, is that almost in reference to the Trisha uh, moment of accidentally deleting the stops that shouldn't have been deleted? I think it could well be, because sometimes we go back saying, this stops bit is showing is deleted in NAPTAN, and then they come back to us saying, oh, it shouldn't be. And then I guess it happens quite a lot. So I, I wouldn't feel bad. I think it happens quite regularly because, you know, as you said, people don't know what a coach stop necessarily is. OK. So that this file has never been updated. 
since 2014, the CSV file that you could get from old NAPTAN that we're not producing anymore. I'm just trying to understand if you need it. If you don't need it, then I can just put it into the uh, we never need to do this again file. If you do need it, I need to put this into the we might need to look at this file. So the funny thing is we produce a coach references.csv as part of an NCST build that goes into open data every Friday. So we, we create an updated version of that file. It doesn't look back oh. into so, it doesn't, so we don't it doesn't go back into NAPTAN uh, and all it is is two columns. It's here's the coach references ID, here's the NAPTAN ID, and here's the link between the two. And we produce that and that goes into open data every Friday. So in a way we're producing a version of that already. So we don't need to produce it anymore. Or you could just put our file as a replacement to it, and you've got an updated one for anyone that wants to have that updated link. Um, so I, because we've just only been doing the stop CSV, so I was just trying to have a look and go, is there anything that we need to keep on doing? It sounds like we don't. What we need to do is make it more obvious to people that if they were looking for this thing, they should get it from you because it's an updated version, because yours is also open data. Yes, but if you're to remove it, we it'd break our system because we still have an automated thing where we require that as an input file from 10 years ago. So <laughs> don't just remove it. <laughs> Let us know and then we can mitigate against um, it. We haven't been producing it since January. Oh, we so, can still download so, it via. Can we still download it? No, nope. we've not been updating it. No, nope, oh, nope, you, nope. you better not be able to, otherwise I've done something wrong somewhere. Yeah, because because well, we do let me off. know if you can. <laughs> Because because we turned off old NAPTAN. We turned off all access to download from old NAPTAN in January. Yeah, actually, you're right, no, it's just in our pre-build folder. We, haven't, we just don't update it every week. So it's there as part of our inputs, but we don't update it. Okay, so I no longer need to stress about it. It's not something that any... So just a quick question to anyone else. Does anyone else use the version that is from 2014 that has never been updated and is everyone using the version that Dan produces that actually has been updated and is updated on a weekly basis does anyone else care about this other than Dan well I'm good. can I jump in Dr J yeah we, we had one of my local authorities contact me the, like three days ago to find out how they change the NAPTAN stop that the National Express uses and I just got them to email support at basemap.com or wherever it was um, because like Dan said he he maintains the link between local NAPTAN and National Express NAPTAN. Then I'm assuming that was the right way to do it was it Dan? Yeah never got the email from him though so who knows where that went but yeah <laughs> that's, that's the right thing. Oh <laughs> it was Hampshire. Oh, Let's Andy and Dan. Let's send. Let's resend the email and make sure that Dan yeah. gets it and can and can track it through. Um. So, the outcome from this is I no longer need to worry at all about this national coach code and where the hell it comes from. And sorry, I shouldn't swear because I know this is being recorded. But quite frankly, I just about lost my mind hunting through trying to figure out where this where this reference came from i was crying at one point because i was reading back through emails from 2006 and 2007 trying to figure out what this was about because that was another reference place that i found about this okay so i'm just going to put a sticky note here saying no longer used uh dan saunders makes the updated one. I'm I'm going to just assume at some point in time in some kind of future <laughs> National Express will eventually update their systems to use Acto codes or like everyone else or are they just sticking with their hand built system from 1990 and just going to keep trucking on. And that's probably a commercial thing that we can't discuss anyway. So. So I uh, my phone rang during that, so I just dropped off. So I've got no idea what you said. <laughs> oh, 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 my entire question was, do we know if if National Express are ever going to update to use Acto codes or are they we're going to keep kind of having this little halfway house code sitting there? 
Uh, no, I don't think they. I don't think they've got much. They've got a system that's not broken. It works for their purposes. They've got no regulation to provide data in other formats, and that's what we do. So we take their data and convert it into Trans Exchange and the Bods profile and all that kind of stuff. So I think because we're doing it and they're not being forced to, I don't think they'll ever change their system. About five years ago, they started the process for exporting to Trans Exchange. It all went wrong, and then they stopped doing it. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Right, so we're going to move on to the next one. Now, this was something that, um, just to catch you up, doing a little bit of an investigation, doing a little bit of a hunt, we uncovered uh, that there was a century managed bit that we didn't know about. So we did the 910 stops, we did the 920, the 930, the 940 stops. We made sure that we had all of those across in our new national XML. And we went and did a little bit of a hunt afterwards and discovered that there was a whole pile of 900 stop areas, which appear to be for coaches, that we hadn't brought across because we didn't know to. So we've now prepared a file to bring it across. Before we go through all of that, I wanted to make sure that they're actually used because nobody came screaming to me. Nobody came crying and ripping their hair out going you've broken everything because we were publishing this from June and everyone's had had that time to break everything so second fun question for the group there are some stop areas called 900 and something do people use them no <laughs> I, what, I love you. I love you so much for that. Just bang. <laughs> what What is in the stop areas for the nine hundred and something? Um, I think we may have created some in our town centres where we have um, we've we've got a bus station that has a walkway straight through to the train station. So to be able to interchange and plan, we created the entrances to the rail station, the entrances to the bus station, but created a big group for the whole lot. And I'm not sure if it's a 9400 code or a 330 code that's a Nottinghamshire one. So it would be useful to know what is in that 900 code. Oh, no, these are literally, they start with 900. So there's oh, okay. 1300 of them or so glo oh, okay. across the country, mm -hmm. and they all start with 900. I haven't been able to find many any places using them but I just wanted to make sure that I hadn't yep. missed something mm -hmm. obvious that you, you're all using them but yeah Trisha also you're doing the right thing mm -hmm. if you if you want to have a quick chat with me Sarah and mm -hmm. Adrian afterwards as to what what stop area and that stop area is being held correctly it should be yours because you know what you're doing you're going to yeah. make it the right size you're <laughs> going to do all the right things with it Mm -hmm. No, I was, I was just double, I was just double checking because obviously with managing tram data as well, um, I just you know it's it's always a big mystery when it goes on. It goes in and it gets accepted, so I'm like, oh, it must be fine then. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. One of the things that I've got on my on our long list of services to look at is what we can do better with the centrally managed stops why they were centrally managed and why they how they could not be um because do you need dft to tell you that there's a rail station there or should you just manage the rail station anyway andy you came off mute so i'm assuming that you had some ideas or dan i was just going to say no we don't use 900 stop areas <laughs> because you, you asked the question for the no answer not for the yes Unfortunately, I think it'd been easier to say it the other way around. Does anyone use them? I think the answer is no. I I I kind of was just I, I did both ways. Whichever way you ask that question, it drives p people towards one answer. I wanted to to make people just stop and think twice of Am I actually using these things, Dan? Do you know so, of anyone who's using them? You're, you're going to tell me you still need them, aren't you? No, we don't, we don't need them at all, but we create something very, very similar as part of the build, and we call it Stops in Cluster. And this uses the same code. So, for example, we have a code at 9000010051, and the name is Liverpool Edge Lane Drive Coach Stop, and it's a cluster of all the stops on the different bays that sit within that. So, Victoria is the biggest cluster because it's got lots and lots of different individual stop IDs as part of it. And we produce that file. So, we produce the ID, the code, which is the 9000 code, uh, the name, 
their physical IDs, their NAPTAN IDs, the operators that call at that stop, uh, the distance from the centre of the CEP um, is at a timing point, um, the line names to the number and the direction of which the service is travelling. So we create that. Um, no one downloads it at all. Um, and we spend a lot of effort creating it every week for the last 10 years, um, and it's never really downloaded or utilised. Um, say la vie. <laughs> Dan, I would it's interesting and I'm pleased that that you're like nobody uses it um because uh I I had that moment of like oh you might be that no you're not because the stuff that you talked about what I've got here on the screen is everything that we've got on those stops or those stop areas they've got a code a name an administrative area 143 is central uh a stop area type gc C8, which I think is general coaching code or something like that, and then a location, and that's it. So I know where it is and a vague idea of what it is, but nothing else. Um, so not even its locality. So it's not even got localities or anything linked to it. So again, nobody uses this. So if we don't do this, I've and bearing in mind we we have a backup so if somebody to if somebody suddenly turns around and says oh my god we need this we we do have a backup for this but if nobody's using this i can just put this aside in my pile of old naptan things that don't ever need to happen again because nobody uses them yeah i think so <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, th there's a serious pile of them. There's a couple of files that haven't worked as far as I can tell since 2013, 2014. And I'm just like, nobody's cried, so therefore they're not they're not useful. I will eventually come and check with you all if anyone's using them, but they're just not there. Cool. So I'm just going to put a little sticky on there to say not used by anybody. Anyone we don't need to publish. Um, we do, but like I said, we do have a backup um, if they're ever needed, if it's ever needed for for something. Brilliant, one less problem to solve. Right, we've got oh, we've got an hour left. We've done ridiculously well. Um, so this one I wanted to ask in terms of coaches. What is missing from the current system? When you think about coach stops, about managing coaches, managing coach routes, all of those things, what is missing from the current system? What are you kind of bodging around and, and doing to make something work? So I, I want to give you five minutes of not hearing me talk, of just kind of putting some thoughts in there as what should be there, who would use it, and what would they use it for? So what are the things that you've been bodging in that should actually be in, in NAPTAN that, or should be in some kind of system? Does that make sense? Um, and if and if users are all like, there's now, there's nothing, that's also completely fine. It means that coaches are completely cared for in, in the current system. So let me set a timer for five minutes um, and I'll give you time to stop and think. Five minutes later. I can see that we don't do very, there isn't very much we need to do with coaches. Um, and I think the things, the facilities that a coach stop, um, that looks like the sort of stuff that if we went to an accessibility model, that looked very much like what is going on with the rail accessibility audit, where they look at the facilities that are available from a number of different lenses, from the lens of a wheelchair user, a stick user, um, somebody with visual impairment, somebody who's hard of hearing, uh, and then there's some cognitive uh, elements and there's also um, I can't remember what they called it but it's for anyone who um, is diabetic or metabolic concerns so it was about somebody who's diabetic or who needs access to uh, toilets very very quickly and then also if people need changing places so they've got these these different personas that they're using to look at rail stations and the sort of things that we've got there would kind of fit into that model um, is everyone comfortable with that uh, yep. 
and this is a hand wavy future, not an actual future yet. We don't have an actual path to this yet. This is more a vague idea future. Um, so the things that we've got is create a way for me to create a new coach stop and know who to speak to about it. <laughs> yes, that's me. Uh, oh, that's you, Dan. Oh, good. <laughs> so the, the so Netflix Express are okay because Netflix Express have generally got good links into the specific ATCO, uh, is ATCO, whoever produces the, the data and the local authorities. But we manage some smaller coach operators as well. And we actually, all we do is we get from them is an Excel spreadsheet that says, you know, here is, here is, you know, here's our routes. And we then create trans exchange and, and stuff on there. And so some of these people say, right, here's our depot. This is where you come. This is where you start your journey. And the depot could be in the middle of a business park or something like that. It could be, there's no naps on there at the moment. And so I forever am trying to work out who I need to speak to to create a new nap town stop. So it's happened on numerous occasions. I'd go to the DFT and the DFT generally say I've got no idea who it is either. Um, so it'd be good to have some sort of like list of professionals in each region and each ATCO code of who manages the nap town within that area. Because a few times I've, I've done general support inquiries to Staffordshire or something like that and it, it just doesn't go anywhere. Um, and so I end up then not providing it in the national open data because it hasn't got a valid NAPTAN and our stipulation is if there's no valid NAPTAN, we can't publish it. So you end up missing out on data for the consumers. That's a really good, that's a really good one, Dan. Um, there is a, th a little service that I was thinking of that I kind of threw out there at one point as a, again, hand wavy idea, not a concrete future of there being some way of contacting a region contacting somebody, but we need to be aware of PII data and spamming and all of that stuff. Um, so that's one of the little pieces that we touched on very, very early on. There's always been a little, there, is, there needs to be some way to get feedback back to a local authority. So mm -hmm. that is one of the things that I think we can add to the very long list. Trisha. Sorry. Sorry, I was going to add to what um, Dan had asked. Um, I remember you having that conversation with us about contact email addresses. Um, and it, it's one of those interesting things because to be able to upload NAPTAN, you have to have an account and it has to be assigned to a person. Um, I mean, I've been doing NAPTAN since 2005, so I'm not going any anywhere anytime soon. And it'd be fine to come back to me, but our team in general has a generic email address. So... I don't know if other authorities have the same thing, but it's okay to have a person as a contact. But what if I ever left? You, you, you're constantly chasing your, your tail. So it's either you have a look who currently has accounts and give all of those addresses, or you see if local authorities do have more generic style email addresses that can be a central source. And that's, that's kind of what I wanted to start to investigate because, I mean, we are still hunting down contacts for all of the all of the local authorities. I think there's a couple that that um, Holly and the team have just. I think they've even taken up calling around people. You may have remembered the Midlothian question. I think we've finally made contact with the Midlothian people. Um, so this is a second thing of like, how do we ensure that? We know that it was Trisha who uploaded the data this week and it might be another member of the team next week. So there's that traceability around who's providing the data and who's done it so that the team knows. But also if somebody needs to contact the team, what is the contact? What is the generic contact email? And that might need to be a separate piece that we gather from everybody and kind of set up a little mechanism that allows somebody to send an inquiry to the right local authority um, to ask you know, can we put in a new NAPTAN stop and it needs to be a coach stop and can you get back to Dan or back to small regional um, small regional coach company to to get the full details. Uh, so facilities, nothing is required, no changes needed as far as I'm aware. We import the NCSD on a weekly basis and it works well. Um, to be fair, I don't use anything to do with coaches. They are bus stops in my area that are if exclusively used as coach stops, but I do not incorporate coach stop data into any of my systems. In Middlesbrough bus station, the coach departures are displayed on the system, come from the national data set obtained directly from by the software company. So it sounds like the software company is getting the NCSD data and using that to display coach between Birmingham and Bristol is going to leave at this, at, from this point. 
It could be. Um, we have quite a few software providers who download the data, um, but then people like National Express also provide real time feeds of their data. So it depends on what they're if they're doing a schedule that comes from others. It's real time. It'll probably come direct from National Express or Megabus. So, quick question. I know there's the bus open data set or BODs. Is is NCSD kind of like the coach open data set or is it the coach op open data set on the older model of data? I know so uh, the NCSD is effectively open coach data. It's been around for the last 15 years, maybe longer that before we did it, Atkins did it. Um, and so we've done it for the last 10 years. Um, and in the last six months we've upgraded so now we do trans exchange in 2.1 and we do it in the 2.411 profile so it meets the bods requirement for timetables but there's no requirement as part of the ncsd to provide fair data or provide uh, live location data or anything like that because it's not regulated in the same way and for many of the operators we don't get that data from them we have to trawl their websites and scrape it or we get an excel file or something like that um which is i said why every friday it's a pain of my life that i have to check <laughs> and make sure that these companies that are really really big um don't have a way of exporting a digital version of their, of their timetables you might have seen the look on my face which was perplexed and 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 wondering how you can be a big company that can export your timetables but yeah. that's an entirely separate thing the very, very first time we took over the contract, uh, Megabus sent us all their routes this for Christmas. They changed them all and they sent us uh, an Excel spreadsheet with about 10 different sheets of their routes. And I created back then an ATCO SIF file manually. And I'm not sure you've ever seen an ATCO SIF file, it's a text based file. And it took me three days to create that. And I uh, and I missed my Christmas party and I was doing it till 11 o'clock at night. And ever since then, uh. I curse coaches. <laughs> so just um we've got tons of time left this is the f the shortest fastest one i've ever run of these because most of the answers was we don't use it um so just wanting to ask dan can you could you take five minutes to help me and anyone else here who wants to to understand how we get hold of the ncsd data how we would download it and because one of the things that I've been playing with is I've been playing with trying different travel systems to try to take Beverly, who lives in Bishop Town, no, who lives in Bourneville in Birmingham, to see her friend Beverly, who lives in Bishopton in Bristol, and trying to map out that journey in different ways by bus, by train, by coach trying to get a coach map for that without going to individual companies is really difficult so I was like is there somewhere that I'm missing is there something that I've just completely blanked on um and um yeah and 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 Andy's given me a link of of a comprehensive site that I couldn't find when I when I was trying to do this so um but Dan if you can tell us how to download the NCSD data that would be really useful Sure. Just so kind there's, of helping us along. So there's three places you can download the data from. One is if you are registered for the TNDS, the Traveline National Data Set, um, there's an NCSD button in there uh, or a zip file which you can download. And that comes via uh, Trans Exchange and you get the option to download 2.1 uh, within that. Or you've got this link here, uh, which is a data.gov.uk link. Uh, ignore the fact it says file added uh well, it was added in 2014 but it's been updated every week since then ah. um, and that, and that uh, just doesn't update uh and that updates every every uh, every every week and that's again trans exchange formats um and includes some of the data and then we have an ftp access which is used by many of the software companies which gives uh users access to various different data sets um, such as the lookups and all this type of stuff um, and then you can download it via via an FTP account and generally the rule there was the DFT had to grant access or give people permission access to access that FTP so it was open data it doesn't cost any money but it sits behind an FTP kind of wall um, so that's predominantly used by uh, I guess I think maybe Andy's maybe someone that uses it via that that mode I, I don't know actually um but yeah we st it still is used quite extensively by yeah people at FTP log in and then download it uh, two or three um, times a week so so silly question because you just mentioned that DFT provide this list 
is it us that we're that are providing this list of and, and managing these day these people no. for you, or is it is it another DFT group? So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and tread as diplomatically as I can here. <laughs> so <laughs> so many many years ago, um, it was it was well run the NCSD. Um, so it was, uh, uh, and then I think as the contracts have gone on, I think all the focus has switched to buses and coaches have been kind of forgotten about. And bless. Mira, she's really tried to bring the focus back onto coaches in the last couple of years, but for a good a good period of time, it was kind of here's the data, here's the produce. And every time I spoke to coaches, and uh, no one really knew about the process at the at the DFT. So I think it's coming more to the forefront now, you know, updating it, bringing it in line with boards and things like that. And that's all kind of happening. Um, and then access to the trans exchange data is you know, done via data.gov and via the TNDS, so people can access it that way. But the historic FTP access. Um, which people log in uh, and download all the lovely additional data that no one accesses. Um, yeah, it's kind of been a bit forgotten about, but we still we still do it. We send a, a weekly uh, email shot to uh, a list of users and it gets a 4% open rate. So we can tell that it's going straight to people's junk email boxes. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we, we, we kind of do that. So we, we have things such as I can send you the I can send you the NCSD zip file. It's only about three meg. Um, of the ACO SIF data and all the additional attribution data we put as part of it. Um, but yeah, we've been doing it for a long time. Uh, thank you. Um, I was going to ask a quick question. That link that you provided to the data.gov, um, the data links say that the files were added in 2014 and 2013. So it doesn't yes. seem like it's been updated. I've mentioned this to various different people at the TFT and uh, yeah. They, it should it gets updated every week. If you were to download the latest link address, mm -hmm. we'll say uh, the twenty fifth or whatever last whatever last mm -hmm. Friday was. Oh, it's just the website that says it's, it's that old. Just the websites, yeah. So that's when data stuff went live, and they put, they put the data on. They added it to the the, the data catalog, and it's not clever enough to pick up when the when the link updates. Um, so it's a bit of a bugbear of mine. I've mentioned it a fair few times. I think I've mentioned it to Adrian before, um, but yeah. We, <laughs> We have the same problem with the Naptan thing. I've actually gone in and just edited, like re-uploaded the same text on the description of the thing, just so that it looks like we updated it in January this year, um, just so ours looks a bit more current. Um, I've actually, and I deleted it, all of our links off and put them back on again so that they look more current, um, which is a ridiculous way to do it, but we're limited by the, the is it the CMS system that we have to use, yeah. the content management system? There should be a better way of doing that. It's just the way the system's set up. So we we've done really well. We've got half an hour left. Um, I just wanted to quickly, and you'll see my usual feedback thing at the end there, because I think we've we've covered coaches. We've covered everything. They are the poor child to buses. Um, they do need a little bit of love and care and attention. Um, and thank you, Dan, for providing all all the all the expertise that we needed today. I, it was so good of you to come along. And and otherwise, I think we would have been sitting here going, mm, "That's a question we need to go follow up and figure out." Um, <laughs> can you take two minutes and just do um, put put your thoughts in of what was good and useful from today? Um, because I can use that to iterate and ensure that the next one stay stay really good. What frustrates you? What what wasn't good or useful? Um, and what made you sad? What was missing? And I'm quickly looking through my notebook to find my list of what's coming up next because I have a nice list of um, all the plan for the public public meetings, and I can I never keep it. Jay, and with. just to just to throw your plan out slightly, I think Sarah and I are planning to do. A session soon. I don't know if you've booked in slots that we're going to nick or we'll just set up something else, but we wanted to do something on the roadmap, like okay, what's coming up next with Naptan and also ETO World management, data quality management tool. And yeah, and when you proposed that, I said, why not do a half, a split one at the next one? So I'll. Oh, you I'll got give that. You yeah, I got yeah. that and, and was planning. So we have just finished coaches. Um, We've done, uh, where is that bus stop? We did naming a stop or, uh, no, 
we did the locations. So we did the gazetteer, uh, starting from the top. We did the lat long eastings, northings accurately, precisely. Then we've done the gazetteer locality, MPTG. What on earth are people doing with it? By the way, if you use MPTG, get in touch with us because we're trying to talk to people who use it because we're looking at how we can make it work and make it better. And Dan, you might be the only person who's still downloading it as far as – not as far as we can tell, but you're one of the few people who's who seems to be actively using <laughs> we, it. We have to download it into Trapeze every so often um, to be able to run our exports because it, it says it's out of date. Um, and um, when we've had new housing developments that suddenly become their own villages, you know, like small urban areas, you know, I have created MPTG data. Cool. So I'm, I'm sure that... Um, Di and Andy have probably done the same as well. Yeah, I've also had to amend one when a new housing estate went in elsewhere in the country and they'd given it the same name as I already had. So we both had to change it to say, you know, whatever, Wynyard in in Hartlepool or Wynyard in, in the Lake District or whatever. Yeah, well, I've got something similar. I have two Gamstons. I have a Gamston in the south of the county and a Gamston in the north of the county. Right. So I have to have different qualifiers for the for the two types of Gamstons, depending where you are. I'm I'm just bemused. I that that, that mind you, I live on the Rockingham Estate, which is also a very large country estate. So if you put in Rockingham Estate, you you can end up in ve very much the wrong places. Um. So uh, so we did the gazetteer. Today was the coach stops. Um. The next one was going to be on the street versus the schema, how we label stops. So this is capturing one of those weird little things that comes up. And I know that there's been a number of questions that came up since we've stopped using a lot of the business rules around, um, for example, hail and ride stops can be marked on the street because there are some street markings for hail and ride stops um, that are used in London. So it's just understanding those weird little places where what the schema says and what's actually happening needs a little bit of smoothing over. Um, so why don't we do an hour of that and we'll do an hour of what's happening in the future at the next one, which will be sometime in April, uh, probably after Easter after the Easter break, we will run a public meeting and I'll get that I'll get that set up and get the dates sent out as soon as possible. Does that sound great to everybody on 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 here? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Cross road Cool. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so throw in your feedback. We can do some chatting and some random questions. I'll um I will stop the recording. Yes. And um, thank you all for your time, for your energy, for your thoughts. It's been really appreciated because it makes these um, difficult, crazy questions around details go really, really fast. Sindhu, yeah. you've, oh, you came off mute, so I thought you were going to say something. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise I was, I, I was unmuted. <laughs> yeah, I think it's been a very informative session because... Um, we just have two coaches that pass through Durham. Uh, so we are a bit limited with how much we work on coach data. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good to know about the differences between, you know, a bus and a coach. You don't normally think of it. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of one of those bits of assumed knowledge. Everyone assumes you know what the difference is, but yeah. It's hard to explain the difference. Yeah, unless you really think about it. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. No problems. Thank you for coming along. Right, I'm just going to find the record. Stop recording. Stop.